exercise 6.3 will take us through learning objective number three. And let's see what we have here. Cost per equivalent unit. Weighted average method. This is the second part of a production report. Our first part we did in 6.2, the computation of equivalent units. We need to know our equivalent units first. Second part is our cost per equivalent unit. Ainsley Industries uses the weighted average method in its process costing system. Data for the assembly department for May appear below, and we have some data for materials, labor, and overhead. And it's important to note that we have three cost categories. Compute the cost per equivalent unit for materials, for labor, for overhead, and in total. So, this is the second part of the production report. It has a heading called cost per equivalent unit. And we're going to need a total column. We're going to need a column for each of the specific cost categories. We have material, we have labor, and we have overhead. And then we need a whole, one more column, a whole price. So the total and the whole price always appear, always appear. These in the middle depend on the cost categories given to us. We'll typically have materials, and we may have labor and overhead separately, or they may be combined into one cost category called conversion costs. But here we're given all three. So we start pretty much the same way we start the uh, to account for the units. We say costs to be accounted for. This is the cost we must account for. We must account for our work in process beginning balance, our beginning balance. And if we look at the uh, at the uh, information that we're given, we have work in process for May. We're only given the cost for materials for labor and overhead, but not a total. So we'll put in the cost for materials, 14550 23620 on labor, and 118000 100 for overhead. Simply just add those up. We get 156, 270. Then we have costs added, and these are basically apply to the units added during the period. So costs added during the period. We are told that we have uh, during May we have 71,650 in overhead costs that were added. We have 14,330 in labor costs that were added, and $88,350 in material costs. We can add these across. We get to 174,330. So this is just addition at this point, 330,600. We add these two together, get 102,900. These two will give us 37,950. And finally, we get 189,750. So now we have our total cost, and we have our total cost of material, our total cost of labor, and our total cost of overhead. Each of these three together equals this. So our total cost equals our material, our labor, and our overhead. Nice and simple, right? Now what we want is, and we figured it out in this question where it's given to us, but remember question 6.2, we figured out our equivalent units. Here we're given our equivalent units. We don't have to figure it out because we're really just doing the second part of the production report. Our equivalent units of production, uh, we enter in here. So our equivalent units of production. In materials, we have 1,200 units. In labor, we have 1,000 units, or sorry, 1,100 units. And in overhead, we also have 1,100 units. And we want our cost per equivalent unit. Well, we just do some division here. 
So if we take the, the 102,900 in total material costs, if we have 1,200 equivalent units, we must have incurred $85.75 of material cost per unit. Just material. Over here, we have 1,100 equivalent units for in a, out of a total cost of 37,950. We do some division there. We get 34 dollars and 50 cents and all we're doing is we're taking 37,950 divided by the 1100 so we've incurred 34 dollars and 50 cents per equivalent unit in just labor costs so we have our material costs we have our labor costs we have to add our overhead costs divided by of course our equivalent units and what we have here is uh, 189,750 divided by 1100 is 172.50 and when we add these three together, we get our whole cost of two ninety two seventy five. So we needed our whole cost, but we only have one entry in that column, and that's way at the bottom. And that's once we add up our our cost per unit in terms of material, in terms of labor, in terms of overhead. That means each unit, our cost, our full manufacturing cost in each unit is two ninety two seventy five. That's part two of a production report. Exercise 6.4 takes us through learning objective number four. Let's see what we're asked to do here. Assigning costs to units using the weighted average method. Data concerning a recent period's activity in the prep department, the first processing department in a company that uses process costing, appear below. And we see that we have equivalent units of production in ending work and process inventory. Uh, equivalent units for materials and equivalent units for conversion and we have our cost per equivalent unit so this is where we typically leave off in the second part of a production report which is to determine our cost per equivalent unit a total of 1300 units were completed and transferred to the next processing department compute the cost of the units transferred okay this is typically what's called the cost reconciliation section of a production report, which is the third part and final part. So cost reconciliation. And under cost reconciliation, we put the heading costs accounted for as follows. So the first thing we did was we transferred units. So we get rid of those. Units transferred. We need to figure out, well, how much were the units that were transferred? To do this, we need a whole price. We're not given a whole price. We are given our cost per unit. Let's just write down here. We have materials. And we have conversion costs. And our materials cost, this would have been uh, uh, the last line of the previous section, tells us it's $31.56. And our conversion costs, we're told, are $9.32. So if we add the two, we will get whole cost of $40.88. And we are told that we transferred 1,300 units. So if we transferred 1,300 units, 1,300 were done in terms of material, and 1,300 were done in terms of conversion. So we can multiply 1300 by 3156 plus 1300 times 932 or just multiply 1300 by $40.88. So if we put 1300 multiplied by 4088 we will get 53,144. So that is the cost of the units that are transferred. Now we need our work in process ending balance. That's what the cost reconciliation does, is it tells us what our ending balance is. Here we're given uh, our equivalent units of production left in ending work and process, and we're told that we have 300 units in terms of material and 100 units in terms of conversion. So basically we have 300 units multiplied by 3156 plus 100 units multiplied by $9.32. So we can write that down 300 times 3156 plus 100 
times 9, 32, will give us an ending work in balance of 10,400 for a total of 63,544. That is the last line of a production report. The cost reconciliation is the last section. It gives us the value of the units transferred since this is the first processing department. This will leave the processing department and enter the second processing department's work in process inventory. This amount, 10,400, sets up our beginning balance for the next period in work in process for department one. We would have a balance forward of 10,400 and we know of that 10,400 what the equivalent units are. So the last section becomes the balance forward for the next period. Isn't that nice? That's 6.4. Now you've seen the entire production report through 6.2, 6.3, and 6.4. Exercise 6.5 brings us back to learning objective number one, journal entries. But this time we're not given any description of transactions. We're given T accounts. And with the T accounts, we're asked to say, to, to uh, um, write down what were the journal entries that created those T accounts? So we have two work in process accounts, work in process for mixing and work in process for baking. Question says, Faberbrot is a bread baking company located in Aachen, Aachen, Germany, near the Dutch border. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. The company uses a process costing system for its single product, a popular pumpernickel bread. Faber Brot has two processing departments, mixing and baking. The T accounts below show the flow of costs through the two departments in April. All amounts are in euros. We're going to drop the euro sign. Required, prepare journal entries showing the flow of costs through the two processing departments during April. So let's start with raw materials, or at least uh, our materials cost, direct materials. We can look at work in process for mixing. We see direct materials entering in there. So we can put work in process mixing as raw materials entering in of 330,000. Let's look at the next one, work in process baking. No direct materials entering. So we're done with the direct materials. All we have to do now is reduce the raw materials inventory by 330,000. There's our first transaction. The second one we'll deal with is labor. So let's look at uh, the work in process T account for mixing. We see direct labor of 260,000 that entered. So work in process mixing went up by 260,000 when labor costs were incurred. Work in process baking has direct labor of 120. So work in process baking increased by 120 through, through direct labor costs. So if we add the two together, we will come up with our wages payable. Remember, no expenses here. Wages payable. And that total is 380000 Excellent. Let's deal with the overhead account now. And we see overhead occurs in both the working process mixing and baking accounts. So we put work in process mixing and work in process baking and for mixing we incurred 190,000 of overhead and for baking we incurred 90,000 in overhead so we know we have 280,000 in manufacturing overhead now this is applied this is applied overhead so this comes out of the manufacturing overhead account now if these were actual amounts this would be an accounts payable but it's not it's applied right so let's not make those little tiny mistakes that mess us up so we have in uh, in work in process we've taken care of all our debit entries but we do have a credit entry we have transferred out 760,000 if we look at work in process for banking we see a transfer in banking baking sorry we see a transfer in of 760,000 so we know that work in process baking increased by 760,000 and we know that it came from work in process mixing so after it was all mixed it was transferred to the baking department 
There's 760,000 over there. Are we done? No, because we see in work in process banking we have a transfer out of 960. Well, if it leaves work in process banking, it must go somewhere. And we're told in the question that there are only two processing departments, mixing and baking. So once it leaves baking, it must be a finished good. So finished goods inventory must have increased by the 960,000. And since it left work in process baking, that must have decreased by 960,000. Aren't uh, journal entries easy once you understand the flow of costs? Easy peasy. There's 6.5.